nurture your gifts instead of thinking you have to nurture a bunch of skills to get paid really well. Because if you get really good at skills that you don't love doing and aren't in your zone of genius, you're going to dislike it a lot. You're going to hate it and you're going to burn out and you're going to want to retire. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm excited to build out this more long form style of content. I've been doing social media short form for eight years consistently and I had a conversation with a good friend, Anthony Cado, who has amazing content. You guys should check him out. And we had the conversation how my personality and, and how I like to talk and how I like to think and express my thoughts fits better with YouTube. I am able to talk more long form content and you all come to YouTube for that kind of content. Grab a cup of coffee, sit in the backyard sauna, less edits, less trying to grab your attention and more just conversation and dialogue. I should say monologue. But I want to talk some, about something today that's been on my mind quite a bit. And it's like this idea of trying to find your perfect job trying to find the perfect business to run that's going to give you fulfillment and purpose. So I've had this conversation with many of my clients, many of my friends who are high performers, successful in the business world, and they reach this point where they've achieved a lot of things. They've written books, they've done seven, eight, nine figures. Someone's on their way to 10 figures in business revenue. They can travel whenever they want. They go on vacations whenever they want. They can do all these things that a lot of people desire and think that that will give them the purpose, that freedom. And even if you think less about that and more about this idea and this pursuit of retirement, this, and it is warm in here, I'm starting to sweat. Ideally, you're not in your clothes in the sauna, but I thought I'll do that. I'll wear my clothes in the sauna for this video. But this idea that we're going to reach this point where we can just rest, this almost this utopia, and that's what's gonna give us that purpose and fulfillment. I don't think that's the thing. We are designed, God designed us to work. God's given us talents, gifts, our stories, our pain, resources. And I'm trying to say that right because apparently Canadians say it differently. Let me know in the comments how you say resources or resources. We, he's given us these to use all the days of our life. It's not that when we reach this arbitrary age, we should stop using these things. No, you've been given talents and gifts to serve others. And this is where the big mindset shift happened for me. I would say in the last year, I listened to a good podcast that kind of talked about this, that we're not built for retirement, but I didn't really know what that meant for me or other business owners, entrepreneurs. I have the privilege of coaching and mentoring, consulting with think less about what is that business? What is that job? What is that title? That's going to give me that fulfillment. Think more about, your individual giftings and how you've been designed. So I can talk, I'll talk about myself here for a second. And I've grown in this a little bit over the years. I used to feel this was overconfident or prideful to say what I'm good at, but I realized that God's given it to me. So all go, glory goes to God in this. I have a lot of ideas. I like problem solving. I can see unique solutions to most problems. I like creating. I am not the person you go to if you want a bunch of things checked off the box to take over the finish line. That's my wife. People like my wife. Super dependent, tenacious people that you want to have on your team. And I wouldn't be able to do anything I've ever done without people like her. And I'm surrounded by, really grateful to be surrounded by a lot of those people in my life. But in saying all that, we can start to get fixated on the vocation and less on who we are in that vocation. So I own a gym business and for many years, I, own, I did a lot of the things. I had a business partner at the time and we both split things up and we did everything pretty equally. But there's some things that would take my energy away and some things that she was better at that I was doing that she should have been doing and vice versa. And if we don't realize this, it can become a cause of resentment. And I'm not saying that happened there. I was really grateful and for that business partnership. But you have been given unique gifts and talents to use in the workplace, to use in different businesses. So once I realized this, 
I put myself in this position, this specific position that I can be in my zones of genius 80% of the time, problem solving, mentoring, because I like having conversations with people and helping them realize their own giftings, their own talents, help them problem solve themselves, guide them, put them in their zones of genius. So when I can put myself in that seat, in whatever business I do, or whatever job I have, I am not only going to enjoy it more and gain energy, the business and the team as a whole is going to benefit. When the business and the team as a whole benefits, the customer or the client benefits. So then if you have this mindset shift, you're thinking, oh, maybe I'm too focused on saying what I need to do, being what business, what role, what job, in what industry. And I become more focused on something that is known as Ikigai. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Let me know if I'm not in the comments. And I believe it's a Japanese way of figuring out what you should do in the workplace, in the marketplace. What are you good at? What do you love doing? What does the world need? What can you get paid for? At the center of those four things, that's your Ikigai. That's your sweet spot. That's your zone of genius. But one of the vocations that closely mimics that for me is consulting and coaching. Because I get to hop on an hour call with a group of people or one person and help them problem solve and help them ideate and help them create something new. And that's what I love doing and talking about different principles and concepts and systems. So the more I lean into that, the less I think I need to do all these other things, the better I'm going to get at that. The more I'm going to nurture that. Nurture your gifts instead of thinking you have to nurture a bunch of skills to get paid really well. Because if you get really good at skills, that you don't love doing and aren't in your zone of genius, you're gonna dislike it a lot. You're gonna hate it and you're gonna burn out and you're gonna want to retire. So if you get anything from this video, find what you're good at, find what God's gifted you with. And again, it can be a story of struggle, of success. You can share that. You can leverage that to help others. It can be money, it can be time, it can be energy. It can be giftings, it can be connections. Use that to serve and help others. And put yourself in different positions in different or the same position in different, let's call it projects or ventures or investments. It's less about the end product of that. And it's more about being present and investing intentionally with who you are in those things. And that'll help you sleep better. That'll have you less stressed about trying to have a certain amount of money by retirement. Because you don't want to retire, you don't need to retire. But the best thing about this. When you nurture these things, you're going to want to spend more time getting better at that. And the value will eventually follow this because you're really good at that. The value exchange happens when you can solve someone's problem quickly. The bigger the problem, the quicker you can solve it, the more valuable you are. Thanks for joining. If you found this beneficial, please share it with a friend, subscribe, say hello in the comments. Thanks for being here.